Hey mate, before you enjoy today's episode, I wanted to take a moment to talk to you about the free 14 day transformation that we are currently running inside of the Unbreakable Man team. Now, if you're a man on the Gold Coast who's serious about improving his physical and mental health, building his self-confidence, and you want to become a part of a team of motivated and like-minded men, then this is the best chance that you are going to get. So as part of the 14 day transformation, you're going to get a personalized meal plan and a recipe cookbook to help you get your diet under control. You're going to be training with myself and the Unbreakable Man team for two whole weeks, and I'll be there by your side, helping you overcome any of the challenges that you will face along the way. If that sounds good, then get in touch with me by emailing me at mitch at unbreakableman.com.au. You can find all of my contact details on the website, which is just www.unbreakableman.com.au. Or you can message me on social media. Instagram is unbreakableman underscore challenge. And Facebook is just unbreakableman. That sounds good to you. Hit me up. I hope to hear from you soon. Back to the episode. What's up, brother? Coach Mitch here. And welcome to this week's episode of the Unbreakable Man podcast. Now, this week's episode is inspired by a conversation that we had yesterday morning at this week's Hour of Power session, which is a free stretching and workout session that I run at Main Beach on the Gold Coast every Wednesday at 6 a.m. So if you're a bloke watching this on the Gold Coast and you want to be a part of this, that's a great way to get started. doesn't cost you anything. You've just got to be there at 6 on a Wednesday morning. Comment down below if you want more details on that. However, at the end of every single one of these Hour of Power sessions, we always sit down and we have a discussion around a relevant topic for the week. And this week's discussion was about the importance of having quality friends in our lives. And one of the main things that came from that, and one of the main benefits, it seemed, in having quality friends around us, was being able to have the conversations that we need to have to get stuff off our chest. To find solutions to problems and mental struggles that we might be going through. Now, it's no secret that men are notoriously bad at this, or at least that's what, that's kind of what we're told, right? And what I find interesting about that, about that assumption is that, yeah, it it does seem that way. I think as blokes, we are kind of encouraged to keep our feelings to ourselves because we want to appear strong and you know, we want to appear unfazed by the things that are happening around us. And don't get me wrong, that by itself has some utility. However, what I found as being a coach of guys, when you, when you help guys get into an environment that encourages that kind of communication, a lot of guys are actually quite open to sharing some of the stuff that they're dealing with. You know, a lot of guys uh, get a massive sense of relief from being in, having a, having a relationship in their life where they can release some of the stress, some of the tension, some of the things that are on their mind that are weighing them down. So I do believe that, you know, as a bloke listening to this, if you're not a big talker, but there are things on your mind that you would like to be able to discuss with somebody... Firstly, you, you probably feel a massive sense of relief if you did feel like you had someone that you could have that conversation with. And having that conversation will probably help you relax a lot around that topic, whatever it is that's bugging you right now. You know, so whilst I do think that generally men were a little bit trickier to, to open up, and, it, and for good reason as well, by the way, I also think that in the right environment, we want to talk. We want to get things off our chest. We don't want to be carrying around this weight all the time. And we actually have a really great physical metaphor that we use for this at the Unbreakable Man Retreat. One of the very first things that we do when we get to the retreat is every single guy there has to go and grab a a rock, like a a decent sized rock as as well, something like coconut sized. And they have to carry that rock with them for the whole retreat, the whole weekend. And that rock is essentially a symbol of 
the weight that they're carrying around. Because a lot of us have stuff on our minds that we could, we would probably be better without, or we would probably be better if we address those things and we could, you know, let go of it. However, we carry that around with us every day. Yet, because we can kind of push it to the side, we don't really notice it. However, when we're on the retreat and, and I give you a physical rock to carry with you on every single hike, and it comes with you to the bathroom and to bed at night, you know, it's in your face the whole time reminding you that there's something in your life or in your mind that is just a weight. It provides no, no practical use to you and only holds you back. So we do a good job of, of, of taking that concept of having some mental weight and bring it into the physical world and we do the Unbreakable Man Retreat. But look, I think that there's a lot of blokes around who are carrying just that kind of weight with them and it makes us less effective. It makes us worse husbands, it makes us worse fathers, it makes us worse friends, it makes us worse employees or employers. You know, whatever a relationship you have in your life, if you were better, that relationship would be better. And one of the things that often holds us back as men is some of the stuff that we carry around with us mentally inside our own minds and not having a release valve, not having somebody or somewhere to go to in our lives to offload some of that mental stress. And as a result of that, it often comes out in unexpected ways. It often comes out when it often forces its way out. And that's where, you know, you end up being snappy at the at your wife or your kids, or, you know, you you just have those days where you just want to get away from everything. And or even you go through a period of real depression or, or anxiety in your life. And it's because perhaps there's something on your mind that you need to say. But for one reason or another, you're struggling to say it. So this, this episode is really about talking about the hard stuff, boys. It's about having those conversations so that you can be a more effective man in your life. So that you can be a better husband, a better father, a better friend you know, better for each of those people around you. Because a lot of the times we hold those things back because we don't want to burden those people. And that makes a lot of sense. And in some contexts, that might actually be the right thing to do. You know, one of the themes that was coming up yesterday when we were talking about this with all the guys at the beach is a lot of fellas admitted that there were things that they wouldn't tell their wives, but they would talk to their friends about. And that makes a lot of sense. I think that certain relationships, certain conversations could or should be, I would say, allocated to certain relationships in our lives. Because, you know, when we reveal something we're stressed about to someone who's also really close to us, then us not being in a, in a great space has an impact on them. And then they're not in a great space and now two people aren't in a great space as opposed to, okay, if I have you know, another point of contact in my life who I trust, who is kind of an outside perspective on the matter, so you know, they're, not in, they're, not, they're unbiased, they don't lose or gain anything by hearing what you have to say and potentially offering you some advice, I think that's really, really important. And this is another reason why, you know, going back to the topic of yesterday's discussion, why it's so important to have quality friends in our lives, boys. You know, I would say, especially other dudes who understand the male experience better and understand the fact that, you know, perhaps there are certain things we want to shield our partners and our kids from. However, we sort of take those blows on ourselves and, you know, being able to discuss some of those issues with other dudes who are, you know, have also been through the same thing. It's really useful and it helps us get some of that mental weight off our, off our minds. So um, the real reason why I think this is super important is for all of the mental health issues that we see going around today and, and men are 
even though blokes typically suffer from anxiety and depression less than the ladies, we're also far more likely to commit suicide as a result of those things. So despite having, despite a lower likelihood of going through it, we're more likely to take it to an extreme. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of, like the, the stats are off the charts. It's something like four or five times more guys commit suicide every year compared to women. And now obviously it's, it's terrible that anyone does that, but it seems to be a real issue for men. And I think part of that is the fact that we can't, we don't think we can open up. Or we don't feel like we have anyone that we can have those kind of conversations with. And so all of those things that we try to shield the people that we are looking after in our lives, all the things that we are trying to shield them from and all those things that we're taking on ourselves without kind of dispersing and sharing, um, you know, they add up. And for some guys, they add up to a point where they can't manage it anymore. So a large part of this and the need for doing this is to reduce the likelihood of, of you or I going through a bout of depression or anxiety in our lives. And it's not just that as well, but you know, being able to talk about some of the difficult things in our lives and having these conversations, especially with you know, someone you trust, someone who you, you kind of admire or aspire to uh, in your life, you know, someone who you believe is, is, has some wisdom uh, to offer you, and an unbiased opinion, I think, is good too. It also can help us recognize some of the parts of ourselves that don't help us. Because when we're going through something ourselves, we are inside the problem. The problem is our life, let's say, or some area of it. It's really difficult to step back and look at it objectively and see perhaps how we are creating some of those scenarios in our lives. Whereas if you talk to a friend or a mentor about this and, and you know, they've obviously, they know you well and they've witnessed perhaps this, this journey that you've been through that's taken its toll on you, you know, they might have an insight that you haven't considered, that you didn't spot for yourself. Because again, you are in the problem as opposed to being outside of it looking at the problem which is what that other person's perspective may be. So another great reason for being able to discuss the difficult topics and the stuff that we're struggling with lads is not just to reduce our likelihood of depression and anxiety and obviously therefore self-harm and anything that comes from that, but also to spot some of the negative trends that we have in our lives so that we can take a different action and improve ourselves like having these conversations, it's like you're doing a review of yourself. You're doing a review of your life. Just like if you were doing a review of anything else, of your business, of your career, whatever it might be, the purpose of the review is to see what's working, what's not working, and what can, what can be done better and what needs to be continued. And having these kinds of analysis of ourselves is really, has a massive long-term benefit on the quality of our lives, not just for ourselves, but once again, for the people around us. You know, especially the people that we, we care about the most and the ones we are committed to and responsible for. Uh, and last but not least as well, having these conversations helps us gain perspective. Because oftentimes, and I had a chat with one of my, my good friends who is also a client of mine last week, oftentimes, we have a problem in our life and 100% of our focus is on the problem, even though the problem is only a small percentage of everything that we have going on for us in our lives. So that problem might be 20% of your life, you know, and the other 80% is, you know, your family, your passions, your home, your, you know, all the other things that you have to, that you are involved in. The problem might only be 20% of the whole, yet 100% of our energy can be on the problem, and therefore the problem feels like 100% of what we've got going on, despite the fact that it's actually only 20%. So having the ability to have these conversations can not just help us improve the way that we feel in the moment, can not just help us see perhaps some of the areas where we're going wrong, but it can also help us 
get perspective on the fact that, you know what, it's not as bad as it feels. My life is not as bad as it feels. I actually have a lot of good stuff going for me. And I should give each of the things that I have in my life, you know, a similar amount of focus and not just the thing that I'm not happy about. Because if I focus all my attention on something I'm not happy about, I'm going to feel unhappy. So we need to gain that perspective and understand that there are things that I could feel happy about right now. And if I do allow myself to feel grateful for the things in my life that are going well, then I will be able to attack the 20% that isn't going well with a renewed mindset and energy. So gaining perspective is another really important part of being able to have these conversations. Now, some of the reasons why I've noticed that men are less likely to want to have these conversations. And, and the first one is the dumbest one by far, and that's pride. And it's a real shame to see guys do this to themselves. And I've definitely seen guys go through that. And, and I understand why, because we might see ourselves as the strong, confident, competent leader. And in our minds, that means that we can never have a problem. And if we do have a problem, we can never admit to it. Because by admitting to that problem, it means that we are somehow no longer a strong, confident, competent leader. And I think part of being a strong, confident, competent leader is being honest. Is being honest about what you've got going on. Because if you're struggling in silence and you're actually failing in some of the other areas of your life because of that silent struggle that you're going through, then you're also no longer being a strong, confident, competent leader. Because what a leader would do is be honest, certainly with themselves, about what it is that's going on and try to put a solution in place, even if that solution meant admitting to the fact that something isn't going right right now. So pride is a big thing. Uh, you know, it's definitely, again, men, we are notoriously um, bad for this. However, just remember this, brother. You know, if you're allowing your pride to get in the way of having this conversation, then it's only hurting you long term. It's only making you worse for all the people that you are trying to appear strong in front of. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not saying, and I said this earlier, right? That doesn't mean that the person you open up to is your wife. And I'm not saying don't open up to your wife. I'm just saying that depending on the situation, you might still want to have that, that you still want to shield your wife or your significant other from whatever it is that you're dealing with, that you're struggling with. And I can understand that. And I think a lot of blokes can. And, and I think that perhaps a lot of, ultimately, I think your woman wants you to be okay, right? So, you know, she needed to be your rock through, through something. I believe that, you know, if she loves you, she'll do that. However, you know, I think she wants you to be her rock. And we want to be our, our lady's rock as well. So I understand, the, I understand the reason why you might not want to share some things with your partner that you're struggling with. But that's why you need some good, solid lads around you to have those conversations with. Um, not knowing where to start, not knowing how to start the conversation is another thing that I think... Uh, a lot of dudes are struggling with as well. And, you know, at the very least, if you've got someone that you think you could talk to, maybe it's a parent, maybe it's a close friend, maybe it's a sibling um, or a mentor, or even if you are working with a professional like a counselor or a psychologist, if you've got someone to talk to uh, or you believe that that person would be there for you in those situations, then it doesn't really matter how you start the conversation, okay? Even if you just blurt it out and it doesn't make that much sense when you engage for the very first time, that person is there to help you put those things into an order that makes sense. That person is there to help you make sense of the situation. So if you've got someone to talk to, it doesn't really matter how you start the conversation. The main thing is that you start the conversation. And as the conversation progresses, things will start to make more sense. 
And that's the whole point of having the conversation is you're trying to gain clarity and that other person acts as, as a sounding board um, to help you make more sense of this in your mind. So if you're just not too sure how to start the conversation, the main thing is that you just start it, man, and it will start to flow smoother as you talk more. Now, this, the next problem that I think a lot of guys have as well, is, that's the biggest one, is, is not having people to talk to, like not having that person that you can go to. And that's really tough, man. That's really tough. And in that situation, like if you are a bloke listening to this right now and you need to have a conversation right now, like you feel like your head's going to explode, then you should honestly call a hotline. You know, you should Google mental health hotline. You know, you could go to Beyond Blue, uh, and there's a, a few other brands that I know have that service available to you. You can get on the phone with a counselor right now if you needed to. And we're very, very fortunate that we live in a country where you could do that. Now, that might seem like a very alien action to take. And look, it is, right? That's not an everyday thing. However, you might think that that's a little strange. I'm talking to a complete stranger. They don't know me. They don't, they don't care about me. They have no idea who I am. But sometimes that's actually better. You know, we've already spoken about how it's difficult for us as men to be honest with the person that we love the most. Because that person is integrated into our life and our experience. So anything that is, is impacting us is likely going to impact them as well. And it's one of the reasons why we tend not to share some of the, the struggles with our significant others or family members. So being able to have this conversation with a perfect stranger and someone whose job it is to have these conversations, that means you know, you're not burdening this person because that's literally what they're getting paid to do. That's why they're there on the phone with you in the first place. So it's you know, the context of the conversation is completely set to help you in, in whatever it is that you need help with. And also, they have no connection to you outside of just that one conversation. You know, they have no, they don't have a, you know, a horse in this race. It's all about you. So those, those resources are really, really super helpful. If you don't have anyone to talk to in your life and you need to have a conversation right now, then I highly recommend jumping on to one of the, the many mental health hotlines that you can access here in Australia. And, you know, if you do want to have a conversation with a professional, and I don't think that's a bad idea at all. You know, once again, it's someone who has, you know, no, no opinion either way on the matter. They're purely there to help you work through what it is that you need to work through. Then definitely get in touch with a psychologist or a counselor or, or someone whose job it is to have these conversations. If you don't have someone else that you feel like you could go to, who you could trust, who you also think could actually provide the the value that you need like the experience that you need of someone who's just going to listen to you and you know help you make sense of what it is that's going through your mind so that would be my recommendation so don't let that stop you if you need to have a conversation about something that's difficult in your life you know you might you don't need to know anyone personally who you can talk to uh, because you have the resources at your fingertips and they're even free like the hotlines are free so you can go and access that too another thing as well that you know, you might, a lot of people think that pride is the main reason why blokes don't talk. You know, we want to seem tough and macho and this and that. But a lot of the times what it comes down to is we don't want to bother other people. We don't want to burden them with our problems. And a couple of things that are worth pointing out with that. Firstly, if your friend came to you saying that he was really struggling with his mental health, with his relationship, he was worried about the future, he was feeling anxious or depressed, what would be your response in that moment? Would it be to, you know, would you feel like, ah, oh, I don't need this right now, I don't need this burden? Or would you, would it be more of a compassionate response, like, oh man, talk to me, let's, let's have a chat right now, mate, let's sit down, you and me, and you can tell me exactly what's going on. Would that not be your response? Like, if you're a decent human being, and if you're watching this podcast, I think you probably are, then more than likely if a friend came to you with a similar sort of situation, more than likely you'd have all the time in the world to sit down and have a proper conversation with them and just listen. 
you know, and you know what? You'd probably feel pretty good about the fact that you were able to do that for them as well. So knowing that, if it's you who's on the other side of that conversation who needs to share something, I want you to not be afraid to give your friend or your mentor or whoever it is you're going to talk to about whatever it is you need to talk about, don't, don't be afraid to give them the opportunity to feel like they're doing something really, really cool for you. Because one of the conversations we had yesterday was about the dynamic between giving and taking. And a lot of people you know, were taught that giving is, is good and taking is bad. And that's ridiculous because without somebody taking, we can't give. It's not that either of those things is good or bad. They are the opposite sides of the same coin. So in order for you to give, someone else has to take the thing that you're giving, you're handing, right? You're giving it to them. And if, if they're not taking it, then you don't get the opportunity to give. And so if you don't take something, then you don't get to give your friend the opportunity to give something to you, which they'll feel great about doing as well. So don't be afraid to, to take on that advice. Don't be afraid to ask for some help, some assistance, because the people who care about you want to help you. They want that opportunity. They want to have the chance to sit down with you and, and do something that impacts your life in a positive way. And, not, and, and part of it is obviously because they want the best for you. Another part of it is a little bit selfish in the fact that we want to feel good about ourselves in that we helped another human being. There's a reason why we live in communities and groups. That's the kind of animal that we are. We want to help each other. We are, we are biologically designed to want to help each other. So just remember that when you're thinking, I don't want to bother anyone with my, my stuff. And the last but not least, and this is a big one as well, uh, and I think that ultimately it all comes down to this, and it's, it's fear, right? It's fear of what's going to happen next. If I open up this can of worms, I can't close this thing again. You know, if I've had this conversation, now it's out there in the world. Somebody else knows what's going on inside of me. And it's, and it's true and it's real now because I've said it. You know, and not only that, but, you know, having those conversations, you might be afraid of what you find out about yourself, of what you find out about maybe some of the decisions you've already made that you can't take back. And it look, it takes real courage to be able to confront that. But that's what this is all about. You know, you're listening to the Unbreakable Man podcast. It's about having courage. It's about being brave. It's about not allowing these things, these weights that we're carrying around with us to break us down, which is what they will do if we continue to carry them with us. So look, it's in terms of having something for you on that, that problem, the problem of being afraid of fear of not knowing what's going to happen next. One thing that always helps me push through fear is asking myself the question, well, what if I do nothing? What if I keep doing exactly what I'm doing? You know, and if you're not in a good way, continuing to do the same thing is only going to make your life worse. It's only going to make the outcomes you're dealing with worse. So take that into consideration. And, and just know that, again, you're listening to this podcast. This is the Unbreakable Man podcast. If you want to be an unbreakable man, then courage is what you need. And it's just courage to start the conversation. You don't have to do it well, you know, and you just need to get it started. So a couple of last things to say just to wrap this thing up. Uh, and a couple of things that you might be able to use to help you out. So firstly, you need to find the right people to have these sort of conversations with. You know, if you had a group, even if it was a small group of mates in your life who you had a lot of respect for, who you trusted and, and who you knew, you know, cared about you and could offer you wisdom and, you know, just a, a listening ear then you're in a great place, man. You're in a fantastic place. And if you don't have that, 
even if you're not going through something right now, I highly, highly recommend trying to cultivate relationships like that in your life. Because at some point in the future, you're going to go through something. Guaranteed, it's life. <laughs> it's going to throw some, cur- it's got some curveballs lined up ready to throw at you. And having this kind of a community, friendship group around you is your insurance policy for making sure that whatever those curveballs look like, you're prepared for them. So I would highly encourage you to start to take some actions in your life that put you around positive, like-minded people. It is that big of a game changer to have those sorts of folks in your life. Now, it's not that easy to make new friends when you're an adult. It really isn't. And, you know, a lot of the times we just make friends with the people that we spend time with. So, you know, work colleagues or maybe the fathers of our kids' friends, whatever it might be. Uh, Instead of necessarily asking ourselves the question, well, who am I? And, you know, what are my interests? What are my passions? What are my beliefs and values? And how can I find other people with the same sorts of things? And that's really the question that you should be asking yourself if you're a, you know, adult man who's looking to find some really quality friends for himself. And, you know, start with understanding yourself better. Who am I? What do I like? What do I not like? What are my values? What are my beliefs? Where am I going to find other people who share those things? That's the question to ask yourself. You can write that down right now if you're looking for something like that. Now, there are already groups set up, most likely, in your local area, wherever you are. You know, it could be a sports club, it could be, you know, a a men's group, right? It could be a a men's walk and talk or something like that. Those things exist now. It's actually really cool that those are opportunities for men, you know, just locally in Australia. And obviously, Unbreakable Man, for any blokes who are on the Gold Coast who are really interested in getting physically and mentally fit, you know, you show up to the first session of Unbreakable Man, you've instantly got 20 friends, you know, the, you will get greeted and received by the rest of the boys in a way that's just as cool as someone who's been there for a month or six months or six years. You know, you're going to be getting high fives, handshakes all around. The boys are going to be interested to know who you are, what you do. And they'll be there to encourage and support you through everything that you do during the training session. You know, so that was one of the things we discussed yesterday as well, is the fact that we are so bloody lucky in this group in the sense that we pretty much, any bloke that comes along here steps straight into an environment where he's surrounded by positive and encouraging men. And, you know, straight into an environment where not only is, are you being, are you being supported to make good choices physically, but you're also in an environment where you can talk, you can have these conversations, you know, you might not, you might not announce something in front of the whole group, but there might be a bloke there that you really click with. And obviously myself as your coach in that scenario, you know, I, like yesterday, I called three or four of my guys in a row just to check in, just to see how they're going. You know, I consider that part of my responsibility as their coach. So that is another fantastic option if you don't have people like that in your life. Now, another thing too, you, maybe you have some, someone like that in your life, but again, you're not great at talking. One of the things I've seen work really well, especially for dudes, is maybe pick an activity to do whilst you're having this conversation. You know, one of the things that I've seen really help is going for a hike, going for a bushwalk, something like that. You know, it's, you're pretty secluded. It'll just be you and your mate or your group of mates, whoever you're talking to. And, you know, I think something about being out in nature just helps us relax a little bit as well. And the fact that, you know, you're both walking next to each other, you're not kind of sitting across from each other like it's an interview or something a bit more serious. You know, you're you're sort of facing outwards from the person that you're actually having this discussion with. I find it's actually easier to be more open and be more honest, purely because you're not completely focused on that conversation. It's, It's just starting to flow a little bit more naturally because you're in an environment that encourages you to just calm down a little bit um, and, and talk a little bit more freely. And I find hiking is a really big one, but maybe maybe you could even, you know, you go in the garage or in the shed or something, and you're working on and you're building something with your mate. And whilst you're building something, you're having a chat 
that can be a good kind of way to start that that conversation or have an environment like that. So those are a couple of things that I think, you know, if you're struggling to start the conversation, getting around like-minded people, you know, finding those people is not that easy. But again, if you're a man on the Gold Coast, Unbreakable Man is literally right here for you. You're so lucky that you have something like this on your doorstep that you can tap into whenever you need. And, and then also, you know, I think doing an activity whilst having that conversation sometimes can help it flow a little bit more easily and, and make it perhaps even feel a little bit less awkward in the beginning. So with that said, my man, uh, if you are dealing with anything right now, um, just remember that it's having a negative impact on you. And the longer you hold on to it, the greater that impact is going to be. So I highly encourage you to drop that weight off and to find a way to do that. Hopefully you've got people in your life that you can talk to. If you don't, you want to find those people. And if you need to have a conversation right now, the, those mental health hot, hotlines are right there, ready for you right now if you need it. But I hope that this episode has encouraged you or inspired you to have some of these conversations that you may need to have, or at least maybe give you some things to think about next time you need to talk about something that's difficult to talk about. All right. With that said, my friend, have a wonderful rest of your day and I look forward to speaking to you again on the next episode. Cheers. Hey, mate, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Unbreakable Man podcast. If you did, it would be absolutely fantastic if you could leave us a five-star review because that's going to help us get our message in front of more men who need to hear it. Now, if you have some feedback for me, I'd love to hear that too. Comment down below. And if you just need some mini doses of Unbreakable Man motivation throughout your week, then you can follow us across all social platforms. On Facebook, it's Unbreakable Man Challenge. On Instagram, it's Unbreakable Man underscore challenge. And on TikTok and YouTube, it's just Unbreakable Man. Your support would be absolutely invaluable. Now, last but not least, do not forget, men aren't born, they're built.